right, so obviously after Michigan lost to Michigan State yesterday, I hoped and prayed uh, for Penn State to maybe change my fortunes around and make the night a little bit better and uh, just kind of even out the Saturday as much as possible. It would never even out because I can't stand losing to Little Brother, but apparently Jim Harbaugh is perfectly okay with it as he is now 3-4 and four against Little Brother. Hello and welcome to Tap Sports. Here we cover the Michigan Wolverines, Ohio State Buckeyes, college football, pro football, all that kind of stuff, all the sports all the time. And today we're going to be talking about the Ohio State Buckeyes versus the Penn State Nittany Lions. Now, this game went pretty much exactly how I thought it was going to go. Honestly, I said the game was going to be 37-21. to 21. That was my score prediction. I felt like Penn State was going to do a much better job than the teams that Ohio State had played, especially recently with Indiana and Tulsa and Rutgers. I thought, felt like they were going to do a much better job keeping the high-powered receivers for Ohio State in front of them and just making the sure tackle over and over again and really making C.J. Stroud work. If you're going to beat Ohio State, and obviously, Penn State wasn't able to do it, but they fought hard and played well. If you are going to beat Ohio State, you're going to have to make C.J. Stroud make the throws, okay? And yesterday, last night, in the second half, he was able to make those throws. But the reason why Penn State, you know, if, if Ohio State didn't get that scoop and score uh, at the end of the second quarter, uh, this game could have been a little bit different. It could have been much more um, of a sweated out type of game if you're an Ohio State Buckeyes fan. But C.J. Stroud made the throws in the second half despite Penn State doing a great job in the first half of relatively containing it. Uh, Stroud did look shaky. He looked shaky. Don't let his numbers fool you. I'm not, you guys know this. If you're an Ohio State fan that's followed this channel for a long time, I have a lot of good things to say about Ohio State. I'm still going to have a lot of good things to say about them in this particular video. Uh, but Stroud end up with, ended up with good numbers, 22 for 34, 305 yards, one touchdown, and no real mistake through the air, no interceptions. But those numbers, it's very much a testimony of what Ohio State's offense is, which is a high-powered, able to make the big play at any moment, and he did whenever he stepped up in the pocket on the one play, threw it deep. Who caught that touchdown pass? Smith and Jigba, I think it was, or Garrett Wilson, one or the other. Regardless, he made the throw when he needed to make it, and over and over again, Ohio State pulled away from Penn State anytime Penn State would try to claw into them. But if you're going to beat Ohio State again, you got to make C.J. Stroud make those throws. And, you know, if you're Georgia or somebody like that in the future, you may be able to stop that. That would be a concern of mine if I was an Ohio State Buckeye fan. The other thing if I'm an Ohio State Buckeye fan that would concern me is I've just noticed this where uh, Olave, these last two weeks, he's got three catches for 44 yards and two catches for 24 yards. So it's going to be interesting, in my opinion, to see if Ryan Day and his staff can kind of make sure that Olave keeps that team-first mentality and players like Olave. You know, one problem with having these five- and four-star athletes uh, high four-star athletes on an entire team is that sometimes these players, especially Olave and players like that, who are looking to be top picks in the NFL draft, you know, they start to get a little mad when they're not getting the ball. Not sure. I'm not saying that about Olave at all. I don't know the guy personally. I'm not saying what's going on behind closed doors, but you know, Ryan Day is going to have his work cut out for him in terms of handling these egos in the future when things like that happen. Olave two straight weeks with less than impressive outings. And he doesn't need to because Ohio State's throwing the ball just fine and they're running the ball just fine. But, you know, you are going to have to manage that. And Ohio State with Urban Meyer, they had issues with that in the past. It's kind of the bittersweet thing of having people, you know, who are high five-star recruits and four-star recruits going pro. Uh, you got a good team on your hand, but at the same time, you have to learn to manage that talent. Jim Harbaugh hasn't been, hadn't been able to do that when his 2016 class came in. A lot of those guys had a ton of ego, and you could just tell through the team the chemistry wasn't there, and they were more about themselves than they were the team. Uh, I won't name specific players, but they were out there for sure. So that's something to look forward to or, or look into moving forward. Let's talk about Stroud, though. Again, he was resilient, and he just he has such good receivers that it's hard for him to not be good. Uh, so it's really hard to tell what C.J. Stroud actually is. I think he's a really good quarterback. I think he's a he, he has the potential to be a really great quarterback in the coming years. In fact, I think Ohio State as a team is the same way. With all the youth, they have a very, very bright future ahead of them. Uh, but I don't know if this is the year. I picked Ohio State preseason to win it all over Georgia. And I would not pick that right now if you gave me, you know, if you gave me that option now, I would take Georgia in that scenario. Uh, I think Georgia's defense would really do a good job on C.J. Stroud and in, thus make it way too difficult for Travion Henderson to go off the way he did. We saw a lot of that yesterday with Penn State. Kudos to Penn State. That front seven played 
unreal for Penn State. And I felt like they would, you know. Penn State, if there's anything for them, even though they've lost three straight in a row now to Iowa, Illinois, and Ohio State, man, they have a really good front seven and a pretty dang good defense in general. So that's going to keep them in most games. I think they're going to beat my team with it, my Michigan Wolverines. And I sure as heck hope they beat Sparty with it because all of a sudden I, I'm just – I'm done with Sparty this year. I'm done with them. <laughs> Uh, I don't even want to talk about that anymore. So, yeah, they kept uh, Travion Henderson in check a lot of the game. I think at one point he had 13 carries for 21 yards, and he ended up with 28 for 152. That means he had, what, 15 more carries for the rest of the game uh, for 131 yards? That's outrageous. He had that long of 68 uh, that really sprouted things open and one touchdown. Travion Henderson, now all of a sudden, Ohio State has moved full Travion Henderson. Um, and I called for it at the beginning of the season. You know, I know Ohio State's team way too well to be a Michigan fan. <laughs> you got to know the opposition, right? Um, I called for Travion Henderson early in the season, before the season even started. He now had 28 carries in this game. Mayan Williams had three, and Garrett Wilson had one. That's it. So he had 28 of the 32 carries for the Buckeyes. He is now the horse for the Buckeyes moving forward, and rightfully so. He's earned it. He is a really good back. I'm telling you, maybe I'm just mad at Sparty right now. I can't wait. I can't wait. I know they want me to grovel at their feet and say, oh, Kenneth Walker is a god. He's the best. He scored five touchdowns. Listen, Michigan's defense and their defensive game plan was terrible for Kenneth Walker. You knew that was all Michigan State really had in the grand scheme of things on offense and somehow, some way, and, and somewhat of a testament of how good he is. But for the most part, uh, there were a lot of schematic errors, a lot of people not being in position, and a lot of people not keeping their for Michigan. I can't wait over the latter portion of the season, even though I'm a Michigan fan and I can't stand Ohio State, obviously. I can't wait for Travion Henderson to prove that he is the best back in America. He is better than Kenneth Walker. I'm telling you. Let me know in the comments below how you feel. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there will be some Ohio State fans that are going to be modest and even say that they give the uh, dats to Kenneth Walker. But Michigan made so many errors yesterday and and let, got themselves out of place. And Kenneth Walker has played against a bunch of scrubs all season long. So as the season goes on and he's got to play this Penn State team that stopped Travion Henderson most of the game until Travion Henderson started to get the Penn State front seven tired in the latter portions, and he's got to play Ohio State's rush defense that has gotten drastically better. Now, uh, we're still we're still questioning how good they actually are. Penn State's not a good indicator because their running offense has been bad all year. But when he's got to start playing some of these more talented defenses and more tough defenses than Michigan, because we're finesse, and um, you know we've been getting punked by teams in the Big Ten in general. So let's see how Kenneth Walker does in the future. I'm rooting against him, <laughs> and I don't root against people very often, but. Uh, but uh, these, these Spartan fans are annoying. And if Jim Harbaugh is not going to speak up for us and Jim Harbaugh is not going to get the job done, then I'll do everything I can on this YouTube channel to talk crap about the Spartans as much as humanly possible because he won't do it. He just keeps his mouth shut and loses. Anyway, Penn State on the offensive end, Sean Clifford, I was saying it during the game. I was calling this game yesterday on the stream, and uh, he was in the zone yesterday. Man, he was really in it. His numbers weren't really indicative of just how good he actually was. He was 35 of 52, so he had 17 incompletions. Uh, that's a little bit high, uh, but at the same time, it is 52 attempts. And also, later on in the game, they got a little bit more in a pass-heavy mode. That makes it a little bit easier for the defense to be able to pin their ears back and sit back in coverage. So that, that made a little bit of a difference. That seam route up the middle or the post route up the middle, skinny post, all that kind of stuff uh, for their tight ends, for Jahan Dotson, for Washington, it was there all game long, and he took advantage of it. He really only had, he had 6.9 yards per completion. So he ended up with 361 yards. Some just because of those short routes and over and over again, he just took what the defense gave him. And Ohio State, that's got to be another concern if you're a Buckeyes fan. And let me know how you feel about this. I feel like it's a concern. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm an Ohio State fan, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing teams uh, not named Rutgers and Tulsa. Well, actually, Tulsa went crazy, so that's a bad example. Not named Rutgers in Indiana. I'm seeing teams that either they're very successful on the ground against Ohio State, specifically early in the season, or they're very su successful by air, and that's been later in the season. Tulsa, I think their quarterback threw for over 400 yards against Ohio State. Sean Clifford threw for 361, so that's something you really kind of got to clean up. Uh, you can't let them, you know, you got to kind of make them be a little bit more averaged out and not, not good on either end. But you're letting a lot of pass yardage, and this wasn't really garbage time pass pass yardage or anything. It's not like he just padded the stats. He got those yards throughout the game. Uh, they were behind most of the game, so they did have to pass, and they had no
no running game at all. Uh, but that should make it even more alarming because Penn State had no running game, so you were able to sit back in coverage and really go against the pass knowing that the run wasn't a threat at all. They only had 20, uh, 29 carries for 33 yards, just 1.1 yard per carry on the ground. So Sean Clifford had his work cut out for him. It's really difficult to be a quarterback in college football or pro football and get a lot of yards and a lot of stats like that when you have no running game to go off of. So kudos to him. Clifford played great. The front seven for Penn State played great. If you're a Penn State fan, you got to be happy with the performance. I mean, you hung in there. It wasn't much different than what I thought it was going to be. Like I said, I, I had Ohio State 37, so I was four points off, and Penn State 21, so I was three points off. I wasn't too far uh, from that, and I, I just kind of knew that Penn State was going to give them the fight, and most Ohio State fans did as well. You know, Penn State, no matter how bad or good they usually are, uh, they get up for this game. They get up for this game. They're ready to play. So yeah, Ohio State moving forward, man. You got Sparty. Please do beat them. That will help us in the Big Ten race. Not that we're going to win it, but it will keep us alive in it. So yeah, please do beat Sparty. Shut them up. Penn State do the same thing. Uh, Penn State moving forward. They got Michigan. I'll be at that game in two weeks. Should be good. Still uh, still a lot to look forward to in the Big Ten East. You know, it's kind of uh, unraveling itself a little too early, in my opinion. I was kind of looking forward to a Penn State, Michigan State, Ohio State, Michigan. Just, you know round robin kind of thing or whatever where they're really kind of clashing heads and going at it and teams are beating teams and team beating teams beating teams hopefully with my Michigan Wolverines on top uh that doesn't seem to be the case it looks like Ohio State and Michigan State may have separated themselves at the moment and so Michigan's going to need some miracles some uh loss to Purdue for Michigan State or something like that out of the Big Ten West and we have to beat Penn State a lot can happen still coming on but for the time being if you're an Ohio State fan with this win you're, you're probably pretty happy you didn't cover the spread you didn't look as good as you usually are there's probably con some concerns that with your youth and how they performed at certain moments do they really have the ice in their veins that they need uh, going forward uh, do they really have what it takes to get the job done against a defense like Georgia we're gonna see you know the good news is for you there's still plenty of time to do it you know there's still plenty of time for them to continue to grow and who knows if they could hit their mark really get that gear going at any time they could be very very dangerous we all know how dangerous Ohio State can be um, it's just a matter of will they be able to do that when it matters most uh, unfortunately for me my Michigan Wolverines weren't able to do that <laughs> so so yeah, Penn State, a lot of fight, man. Uh, you guys look good. Nothing to hang your head over. It's been a disappointing season all around, but let's just be honest. If if Sean Clifford didn't get hurt against Iowa and he wasn't 100%, obviously, against Illinois, you'd probably only be a one-loss team. You are, by all accounts, a one-loss team. It doesn't matter on the on the actual standings. You got three losses, but uh, and, and you know moral victories are, are whatever you think of them, but at the end of the day, in my mind, Penn State's a hell of a team, and I'm not looking forward to playing them in two weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'll have more for you later throughout the week, and uh, we'll be here all college football season long. Hey, even if you don't respect this channel, even if you don't respect my opinion, guess what? Win or lose, I'm here every single week, so hopefully, hopefully, uh, you can try to respect that uh, because you know a lot of people talk junk and uh, don't show up the next day. Have a great day. Bless Sunday. Take care, guys.